Today on X-Play. Sweet powder, for real! The best of the play. <laughs> Station <laughs> two. I'm packing too much sexy muscle. Kill a hooker. It's game time. Sessler, Lord Morgan Webb. Prepare to be reviewed. Prepare to be reviewed. This is X Play. They now live in a tree. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Hello and welcome to X Play. Today is a special day. After three years and nine suicide attempts, X-Play is looking back to give you the definitive list of the best games for the last generation of consoles. And hey, hold on to your letter writing hands. We know the games are still coming out for the old consoles, but we don't care. No. The future is now. Mm -hmm. So this week we'll be taking a safari through the games released for the Xbox, PS2, and GameCube, and turning subjective aesthetic choices into a list with numbers on it. You will probably disagree with us. We don't care. No. How much we don't care is as boundless as the sea. Yeah, but today we begin with the PS2. Small, black, and infinitely delightful. But with the largest library of titles, the PS2 presents a difficult set of choices. We've seen an amazing array of games come out for the PS2, from the goofy antics of Spy 3 to the high-pressure rice ball production of the Yoshinoya game. Mm -hmm. Now, you probably think you have a good idea which games you're likely to see on the list. But we're fundamentally unstable people, right. so we're full of surprises. You'll have to stick around to see which games made it and where they rank in the countdown. Mm -hmm. So, in the words of Fraulein Maria, let's begin at the beginning. A very good place to start. Here's our pick for the 10th best game of all time for the PS2. We begin our descent to the ultimate PS2 game at the top of the list with number 10. Sweet powder, for real! Rumpus! SSX Tricky is without a doubt one of the best extreme sports games ever. You'll plunge down into the icy caverns of these overly stylized courses in pursuit of amazing tricks and the fame of first place. Hey, Mum, that's for you. Moby loves ya. Even though SSX is last on our list, it was first in our hearts as the flagship game for the PS2. SSX Tricky took the fun formula and perfected it right down to the last drunken snowboarder. Queen of the hill, baby! Look, I haven't played this game in a while. But it's like riding a bike. A bike that goes 100 miles an hour down a 90 degree slope. I win, we all win, you dig? Actually, you lose, because a robot and a rodent are in the number nine spot. We're still pretty busy, but in a more um, domestic sense. Ratchet and Clank Going Commando is another game on our list that built upon the early titles in the franchise and improved the gameplay. The boys hop across a new galaxy as Ratchet lays to waste all the enemies in his path. Whoa, whoa, no, hey, no, no, look, I'm just here to fix the transflexor coil. Throw in some fun-loving cutscenes. Or this will happen to you. Or... And you have the makings of one of the system's best games, but not good enough for number eight. I guess... No one needs a hero right now. Oh, but we do. And what better hero than a boy with bullhorns? Eco is the story of a boy who has come of age, which means the game could have gone one or two ways. Either Eco gets locked away in an ancient castle and enclosed in a tomb, or he locks himself in the bathroom, spending all his time doing you know what. Ah! So glad it's the ancient castle. Ah! Much like a young prince of Persia, Iko will hang from pipes and climb walls, all while trying to help a mysterious ethereal girl trapped in a birdcage. Oh yeah, Iko doesn't speak English, but I think we get his gist. No, no, no. This way. Stop dragging your feet. Look, I'll put you right back in that birdcage. Now get a move on. Perhaps one of the first games on the PS2 to blend art with gameplay, Eco has the style of a David Lynch movie and the misogynist touch that can only come from Japan. 
You know, we had a lot of trouble deciding whether we should put SSX Tricky or 3 on the list. SSX3 does have smoother gameplay and prettier graphics, but we had to reward Tricky. It shifted the way we look at extreme sports games and played one really good song over and over and over again. Speaking of things that seem like they'll never stop, we can't just look at the best games for the old school consoles without taking a look back at those titles that proved exemplary in the field of sucking. Here's a look at some of the worst games ever released for the PS2. Worst use of Johnny Mosley. Johnny Mosley, mad tricks. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Your Olympic days are far behind you. What if it snowed in San Francisco? And what if Johnny Mosley never existed? No one would notice, except we'd never have these mad tricks. America thanks you, Johnny. Now go away. Worst use of a convicted rapist. Mike Tyson heavyweight boxing. Hey, Iron Mike, you should go back to prison for this game. And take that idiot Johnny Mosley with you. After the break, more counting down. And later on X-Play, the best and worst games for the console. To reach your life. Your life. It's your show. Your show. An all new Attack of the Show. Next, only on G4. G4. They killed the god of epic poetry. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. Now a generation of consoles are dying and while they will live forever in the hearts of minds of men who dream of it being 2002 forever, for the rest of us time keeps on spinning, which means it's already time to reminisce about games that came out last year. When we left off, our countdown was at number eight. We lacked the real boldness to question the mathematical concept of numbers or the Cat Steven album numbers. So we're just gonna go ahead and continue with the seventh finest game in the history of the PS2. Stealing the number seven spot for the PS2 is Sly 3, Honor Among Thieves. Yes, nature's nocturnal bandit comes back for his third rummage through the trash can of great gameplay, outstanding graphics, and unparalleled controls. No two ways about it, this is a fantastically fun game. The storyline is absurd, but only to the point of allowing the crazy shenanigans of Sly and his colorful cohorts. I'm packing too much sexy muscle. Their goofy missions are well designed and they show off some of the best platforming ever seen on the PS2. All this, and it's got a turtle in a wheelchair. Yeah, that's uh, that's strange. And if paraplegic reptiles don't do it for you, Sly even manages to throw in a few new playable forest friends and some unbelievable three-tiered boss battles. I'll floss my teeth with your spine! We had a great time hanging with Mr. Cooper. Fingers crossed, we get to see him sneaking onto the PS3 sometime soon. At number six with a bullet is Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. The subtitle is a pretty apt description of one of the game's features. Yes, Snake Eater brings us the smorgasbord that is the great outdoors, allowing us finally to eat snakes and frogs and even alligators. Mm, them's good eats. Along with his Zagat survival guide, Snake also brought a fabulous camo wardrobe that would make any survivalist fashionista proud. Oh my god, that looks so good on you! The new closed combat system is pulled off perfectly and the visuals are simply stunning. <clears throat> In keeping with the Metal Gear series, the storyline here is beyond reproach and the boss battles, brilliant. Snake Eater is so lip smacking good, we definitely recommend it to the PS2 masses. As Marie Antoinette said, let them eat snake. Rolling in at number five is proof that the Japanese can outweird us staunch Americans any day of the week. And perhaps also concurrently proving that they have way better crack over there. Katamari Damashi introduced us to a little prince that rolls things into giant balls in order to rebuild the constellations. Lucky for us, he has no qualms about rolling up people too, making him a true Zodiac killer. Take that, copper. And it's not like the people are blissfully unaware of the danger the Katamari holds either. No, they scream in horror as they're stuck to this giant ball of death destined for a cosmic furnace. It's sick, it's twisted, it's the most addictive fun we've had in years. And to think we owe it all to one of the king of the cosmos's drunken vendors. Wow, he talks in record scratches. Pink was right, God is a DJ. For sheer weirdness and great simple gameplay, there's really nothing else like it. 
So that terrible American crack isn't doing it for you anymore. Just say yes to Katamari Damashi. <laughs> oh, Katamari rolling in at number five. Now, Lottie probably thought the game had an excellent chance at being named the top PS2 game. You were wrong, because however whimsically fun and innovative Katamari may be, it is like fugu, tea ceremonies, and dignity, just a bit too Japanese for Americans to really understand. And X-Play is a deeply American show. We may mock our country, but we love its ignorant, overweight, Kenny Chesney loving ass. So stick around as we continue to count down the 10 best games ever released for the PS2. Worst use of the guy who created Spawn, McFarlane's evil prophecy. Yeah, Todd McFarlane created Spawn, but he also spent millions buying up Mark McGuire signed baseballs. How'd that work out, McFarlane? Almost as well as evil prophecy, I'll bet. <laughs> Worst use of a comedian's name from the 80s, Dice. It's based on an anime show. That's one strike. Killer Frogs, that's two strikes. Little Boy Blue, this game sucks. Oh! That's the third strike. In scant moments, more counting down, and later on X-Play, the very best game for the PS2. <laughs> Saving. Do not remove Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. Now, you may be wondering how we decided on the placement on this list of the finest games of all time for the PS2. I would honestly love to know myself. I took some Robitussin for cold thing I had and then spent like nine days sleeping it off. And then by the time I came around, there was this list. Yes, well, we just decided by general agreement, except in those cases where no consensus could be achieved. Those cases were resolved by mace combat. So if you're wondering why Gran Turismo isn't on the list, let's just say I'm pretty handy with the mace. And I really enjoy game number four. Here it is. <laughs> Ah, this takes me back to a simpler time when men were men, women were women, and both used plenty of hairspray. Guitar Hero hits number four on our charts with its pitch-perfect track list and easy-to-use guitar controller. Unlike a lot of rhythm games, this one has songs we actually want to listen to. Within minutes of starting your jam session, you can get educated by Judas Priest. Or see the sights with Franz Ferdinand. Or rock out in Boston. And don't worry, we promise that when you play, you'll look more dignified than Adam and I. Okay, actually, I really can't make that promise. Wow, remind me to never touch that controller again. We can't wait for the game's upcoming sequel, as long as it doesn't have some 41 on the soundtrack. God, they suck. Smashing into number three is Shadow of the Colossus. This action-adventure game tells the tale of a young man who literally travels to the end of the Earth and makes a deal with mysterious forces to kill 16 legendary colossi in order to bring his dead girlfriend back to life. So, you know, it's just like the plot of Ghost Dad. In order to bring down these beasts, you have to stab them in their sensitive areas, which are indicated by huge glowing targets. <laughs> After killing each monster, you get assaulted by mysterious tentacles. Look up the words thankless job in the dictionary and you'll find a picture of this guy. Since it comes from the makers of the cult hit Eco, Shadow of the Colossus is a game that's hip enough to make the pretentious art film crowd swoon. But unlike most things they love, this one's actually enjoyable. Thank the gods you came back for me. I didn't come back for you. Wow, this guy makes Dick Cheney seem likable. Scoop it up number two is God of War. Despite his bad attitude, we can't help but enjoy watching Kratos slice and dice his way through this blood-soaked action game. Why do we love it so much? Well, it's not just the threesome minigame. Stay, Kratos. Just a bit longer. Or the campy gore. Or the enormous boss battles. Oh no, wait, it was the campy gore. There's no doubt about it, God of War is so good, we guarantee you'll be popping heads off bad guys for many years to come. 
<laughs> Sweet music to our ears. Well, we've nearly made our way to X Play's pick for the best game for the PS2. The tension is palpable. Please try to manage the stress until we come back from commercial. Our fan base tends to be pretty susceptible to heart disease. After the break, we've got the picks for the very best and the worst games ever released for the PS2. Worst insult to Canadians, ESPN National Hockey Night. This game did more damage to hockey than the hockey strike, Wayne Gretzky's wife, and the Mighty Ducks trilogy combined. Score! Worst insult to Scientologists, Minority Report, everybody runs. Shame on you, Tom Cruise. This game is so bad, Xenu should return to Earth and kick you out of Scientology forever. <laughs> Up next on X-Play, the very best and worst games for the PS2. They cannot contain their excitement. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. We have finally reached it, the electrifying conclusion to our definitive list of the finest games for the PS2. But before we reveal the best, we have an obligation to create tension by stalling and telling you the worst. But before that, we have to tell you the runner-up worst yeah. games. Coming up in third, the lamest Japanese RPG in the history of man, Shining Tears. In second place, the festival of incomprehensible exposition, that is, Dragon Ball Z mm. Saga. And in first place, here's the worst game ever released on the PS2. Worst game for the PS2, 50 Cent, Bulletproof. Someday we'll all look back on this era in time and pinpoint the exact moment rapper 50 Cent's career went to the crapper. Oh! Ah, the slow, plodding movement of Fiddy as he goes through this neighborhood, or hood, as it were. Hey, it's Dr. Dre. Doc, drive us off this video game. Sadly, Fiddy didn't have Dre or Eminem produce this game like they did his music. That's why it sucks. Oh! So why was this game even made? Cash, my friends. Cold, hard cash. Okay, how much? The worst thing we can say about this game, it's wanksta. Very, very wanksta. <laughs> well, now that we've shown you the worst, here is the best. With the vast mature gameplay we only realized was possible on the PS2. This franchise has fascinated us for years. But in its most recent iteration, the game presented both a huge world and a compelling story. Ladies and gentlemen, X-Play presents the single best game ever released for the PS2. Welcome home, Carl. Glad to be back. Boy, are we ever. When the reckless drivers and random violence of real life get to be too much, we have the reckless drivers and random violence of GTA to soothe our troubles. Of course, soothing and troubles are code words for prostitution and homicide. Nobody tell Jack Thompson. We didn't play another PS2 game as good as Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. It's a PTA mother's worst nightmare and tops our list as the number one PS2 game of all time. Rockstar's epic action gangsta Sam spreads its arms wide and hugs us close to its blood-soaked bosom. Like GTA 3 and Vice City, San Andreas follows the life of a thug as he rises through the ranks from small-time hood to criminal kingpin. That means lots of painting with the urban brush of violence. The missions are mostly driving shooting, but the sheer amount of choices, nooks, crannies, and side missions create an utterly convincing world. What? Rocket packs are convincing. The state of San Andreas is modeled after California with the faux Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Las Vegas. Eddie, I can't deal with this guy. He's an idiot. Yeah, I know Vegas isn't actually in California. Each area has its own distinct atmosphere and feels like its real-life counterparts. When I was a kid, swimming off the Santa Maria, I once got a condom stuck to my face. <laughs> oh, yes. That happened to me this morning on my way to work. I love L.A. From a sheer fun perspective, San Andreas pitches pretty damn close to a perfect game. I can almost hear Kevin Costner crying in his pillow. Even after we've played it, beat it, and put it away, we still find ourselves coming back. We might have completed the story missions, but San Andreas still has enough other stuff to occupy us for literally hundreds of hours. Or we just walk around and blast people like Wesley Snipes in New Jack City. This time around, Rockstar truly ordered everything on the menu. I'll have two number nines, 
a number six with extra dip, a number seven, one with cheese, and a large soap. And in an industry rife with crummy acting, San Andreas actually creates compelling characters. Would it look like I'm made of pudding? One of them being a stone Sam Jackson. Some of the finest. San Andreas also manages to bring us a who's who soundtrack of artists that put us right back in the early Clinton years. The rap scene was exploding. Right said Fred's sexy body won America's heart, and Madonna had yet to become a desperate attention whore. Love me, love me. The authenticity of the music is icing on a cake of awesomeness, as you can see in this conveniently time-filling montage. In the immortal words of 50 Cent, we love GTA San Andreas like a fat kid loves cake. Cake! It's the number one game on the PS2. You just have to love any game that gives you a stoned Sam Jackson. This convenient quality shopping list is brought to you by X-Play.